Hello, and welcome to the Word of Truth, the program that's designed to help you understand your Bible. My name is Brother Nathan, and I'll be your teacher for today, and reader for me will be part of the Torah from the House of Jacob Bible Study class. The title of today's lesson is The Ten Commandments and Their Importance. The Ten Commandments and Their Importance. Let's get right to the scriptures. We're going to start this off in Exodus uh, chapter 20. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Exodus 20 and verse 1. When you get there, Brother Torek, go ahead and read. And God spake all these words, saying, uh -huh. I am the Lord thy God, right. which I brought thee out of the land of Egypt, uh -huh. out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make it unto thee any graven image, uh -huh. or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or is in the earth beneath. Hold on right there. So verse 4 uh, says, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. So just keep that in your mind. Go ahead and read. Or that is in the water under the earth. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not bow down themselves to them, nor serve them. Mm. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, uh -huh. and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Now hold on, it says, and showing mercy unto thousands that love me mm -hmm. and keep my commandments. Go ahead and read. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Uh -huh. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Uh -huh. Remember the Sabbath What's day that? to keep it holy. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Uh -huh. Six days shall thou, shall, shall thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath, has, is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Any work. Thou, nor thy son, uh -huh. nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger within thy gates. Right. For in six, for in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, yes, the did. sea, and all in it, and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the seventh day and hallowed it. Hold on, it said, Wherefore the Lord blessed the seventh day and hallowed it. Mm -hmm. Verse 12, go ahead and read. Honor thy father and thy mother, mm -hmm. that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Okay. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Uh -huh. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thy, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. Right. Nor thy, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Nor anything that is thy neighbor. Skip down to verse 20 and go ahead and read. And Moses said unto the people, uh -huh. Fear not, for God has come to prove you, and that his fear may be before your faces, that ye sin not. Hold on. It says, verse 20 says, And Moses said unto the people, Fear not, for the Lord, for God is come to prove you, and that his fear may be before you, your face, that ye sin not. Uh, skip down to verse 23 and go ahead and read. Ye shall not make, ye shall not make with me gods of silver, mm. neither shall ye make unto you gods of gold. Okay. And also of earth shall thou make unto me. And shall sacrifice thereon thy burnt offerings and thy peace offerings. All right, that's good. Let's go to Exodus chapter 24. So right there where we just seen um, and uh, Exodus 20, what we just read was all talking about the Ten Commandments that the Lord has laid out. Now we're just going to uh, get down with some more scriptures that's backing up what we're saying where the commandments are good and how we should follow them and uh, the, their importance. We're going to go to Exodus chapter 24. And uh, we're going to read verses 1 through 3 at this particular time. When you get there, brother, go ahead and read. And he said unto Moses, mm -hmm. Come up unto the Lord, mm -hmm. thou and Aaron, Nadab in the bayou, mm -hmm. and seventy of the elders of Israel, and worship me yet of ye afar of off. Mm -hmm. And Moses alone shall come near, near the Lord, but they shall not come near. Mm -hmm. Neither shall the people go up with him. And Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord. And all the judgments and all the people answered with one voice and said, all the words which the Lord have said, we will do. Okay. It said all the words which the Lord has said, we will do. Right. So this is what they said. Right. Am I right there? Yeah. All right, that, was, that was scripture saying, mm -hmm. let's skip down to verse nine and go ahead and read. Then went up Moses and Aaron and Nadab in the bayou and 70 of the elders of Israel. Right. And they saw the God of Israel. Okay. And there was under his feet as it were a paved work of sapphire stone. Uh -huh. And as it were the body of heaven in its clearness. And upon the nobles of the children of Israel, he laid not his hand. Uh -huh. 
Mm. Also, they saw God and did eat and drink. Ooh. And the Lord said unto Moses, come up to me, come up to me into the mount and be there. And I will give thee tab- tables of stone. Right. And a law and commandments, which I have written that thou mayest teach them. Go ahead. And Moses rose up and his, and, and his minister Joshua. And Moses went up into the mountain of God. All right. Skip down to verse 16. Go ahead and read. And the glory of the God abode upon Mount Sinai. Uh-huh. And the cloud covered it six days. Right. And the seventh day, he called us Moses out of the midst of, of the cloud. Go ahead. And in, and the sight of the glory of the Lord was like a devouring devouring fire uh-huh. upon the top of the mount in the okay. eyes of the children of Israel. Go ahead. And Moses went into the midst of the cloud and got him up into the mount. And Moses and Moses was in the mount 40 days and 40 nights. Okay, so right there it just says that Moses up in the mount 40 days and 40 nights. God called Moses to come up to the hill. He brought him to 70 elders and a few of his brothers to come up there with him. Mm-hmm. And then he himself went up to uh, the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights. Let's just uh, go to Matthew right now. Matthew chapter 5. <laughs> Matthew chapter 5. And we're going to pick it up. At verse 17, we're going to read 17 uh, through 19. When you get there, Brother Torek, go ahead and read. Think not that I have come to destroy the law or the prophets. Oh, hold on now. This is Jesus talking right here. And he says, think not that I come to destroy the law or the prophets. Go ahead. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Mm-hmm. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law to all be fulfilled. Can you read uh, 18 again, brother? For verily I say unto you, mm-hmm. till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law to all be fulfilled. Go ahead. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments mm-hmm. and shall teach man so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. Right. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same should be called great in the kingdom of heaven. So we also know that there's still a heaven and there's still an earth outside. So these commandments that that that, that was always written from the beginning, mm-hmm. even you're going to see them, they're also written towards the end. It still says that we must do them until the heaven and earth pass. Now let's go to Galatians real quick here. And we're going to go to Galatians chapter 3. It's still all about part of the Ten Commandments and its importance. And we're just going to throw some other stuff in here right here. Just give you some a deeper understanding. Uh, we're going to go to Galatians chapter 3. And we're going to pick it up at verse uh, 16. This is going to bring in the covenant. But it also is going to talk also about the commandments just a little bit here. Uh, one of the promises that God had made uh, with Abraham. But let's just check it out. Verse 16. Go ahead and read. Now to Abraham and his seeds were the promises made. Okay. He said not to seeds as of many, uh-huh. but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. Right. And I, and this I say, that the covenant that was confirmed before God in Christ, the law, which was 430 years after, cannot disannul, can, cannot disannul. Okay. So it says that, uh, it says, and I said, and this I say, that the covenant that was confirmed before God in Christ, the law, which was 400, 430 years after, cannot distant law that it should make the promises of non effect. Go ahead and read. For if the inheritance of, be of the law, uh-huh. it is no more a promise. Right. But God gave it to Abraham by promise. Okay. Wherefore then serveth the law. Mm. It was added because of transgression. It was added. Because of transgressions. Go ahead. Till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. Uh-huh. And it was ordained by the angels Ooh. in the hand of a mediator. Come on. Now, we, now a mediator is not a mediator of one, uh-huh. but God is one. Uh-huh. Is the law then against the promises Hold of God? Hold on. It said, is the law then against the promises of God? Remember, the uh, the promises was actually made before uh, the law uh, or the Ten Commandments even came in. But there were still promises out there. And sometimes people... Uh, get to this controversy where they're talking about I'm just, you know, I'm part of Abraham's seed mm-hmm. so that's all I gotta do is be part of Abraham's seed but uh, pick it up at uh, verse 21 again and go ahead and read is this is the is the law then against the promises of God? Uh-huh. God forbid no, in other words, go ahead for if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law okay, we're gonna go to Exodus uh, back to Exodus chapter 20 and uh, we're gonna see what the people have been doing in a minute, but we're gonna want to uh, rehearse one thing that I, I said or read earlier. Exodus 20, um, 
and verse 23. When you get there, just go ahead and read it, and that's it. Ye shall not make with me gods of silver, mm -hmm. neither shall ye make unto you gods of gold. Okay, so this that was still all part of the Ten Commandments, where God told him don't make nothing of silver and don't make nothing of gold. And remember that Moses had went up to the uh, mount to, to get these oracles, um, uh, and he was up there for 40 days. So let's just see. How, how do people, how did we respond during that time? Uh, we're going to go to Exodus. That is actually Exodus uh, chapter 32. Okay. We're going to go to Exodus 32. And we're going to pick it up uh, at verse 1. Exodus 32. And we're going to pick it up ooh, ooh, at verse 1. Exodus 32 and verse 1. Go ahead and read. And when the people saw that Moses laid to come down out of the mount, okay. the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron uh -huh. and said unto him, Up, make us gods, which shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us out of the land of Egypt, we know not what has become of him. Now we do know <laughs> what became of him. And Aaron knew what became of him because Aaron was with him when he went up there to, to get the uh the Ten Commandments from the Lord. Go ahead and read. And Aaron said unto them, mm. Break off the golden earrings mm -hmm. which are in the ears of your wives, mm -hmm. of your sons. Hold on. That's kind of funny. It, it says about the uh, earrings of your sons right there. That means that Shorty was wearing earrings back in the day. But go ahead and read. That's a side note. Go ahead and read. And your daughters, mm. and bring them unto me. Uh -huh. And all the people break off the golden earrings right. which were in their ears, right. and brought them unto Aaron. And he received them at their hand, and fashioned it with a graven tool. Fashion it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. After he had made it molten, after he had made it molten calf. Right. And they said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. These be the gods that brought us out of the land of Israel. Go ahead. And when and when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it. Mm. And Aaron made a proclamation mm. and said, Tomorrow is the feast to the Lord. Go ahead. And they rose up early in the morrow mm -hmm. and offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat and to drink and rose up to play. Just hold on real quick here. They, they're doing everything that the Lord God told them not to do. And they all had agreed at one particular time that oh, all you do. said we will do. Go ahead and read. And the Lord said unto Moses, get thee down mm. for thy people, which thou brought us out of the land of Egypt, have corrupted themselves. Uh oh. So they now, have now, turned. Now the Lord has picked this up now. Uh -huh, and did. so now the Lord is about to uh, get a little wrath or feel a little anger here. Go ahead and read. Verse 8. Uh -huh. They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. Uh -huh. They have made them a molten calf Ooh. and have worshipped it and have sacrificed thereunto and said, These be thy God, O Israel, uh -huh. which have bought thee out of the land of Egypt. Go ahead. And the Lord said unto Moses, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff necked people. Ooh. And now, therefore, let me alone, that my wrath may wax hot against them, and that I may consume them, and will make and will make of thee a great nation. Oh wow! And Moses besought the Lord his God and said, Lord, why doth thy wrath wax against against thy people? Hold on, please. Uh, this is where Moses really, really, really pleading again he to the Lord pleading. for his people. Uh, start back at verse eleven. Go ahead and read. And Moses besought the Lord his uh -huh. God and said, Lord. Why doth thou wrath, why doth thy wrath wax hot against thy people? Right. Which thou hast brought forth out of the land of Egypt with uh. great power and with a mighty hand. Right. Wherefore should the Egyptians speak and say, For mischief did he bring them out to slay them in the mountains. Right. And to consume them from the face of the earth. Turn from thy fierce wrath and repent of this evil against thy people. All right, skip down to verse 19 and go ahead and read. And it came to pass, uh -huh. as soon as he would come near unto the camp, uh -huh. that he saw the calf and the dancing, and Moses' anger waxed hot, and he cast and he cast the tables out of his hand and break and break them beneath the mountain. Okay, so right here, uh, Moses, uh, first God has already told Moses that this is happening down there, and he was ready to destroy them. And then next thing you know, then Moses is saying to God, like, hey, don't don't kill your people like that. And then so God, so Moses comes down out the, uh, 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 off the mountain to see all this stuff, and now he's he's um he got a wrath going on, and so he's not feeling too comfortable about himself, about what his people are doing also. And then, of course, check out what his brother says at verse 20. And he, read. and he took the calf, uh -huh. which they had made, uh -huh. and, he, and he burnt it in the fire, uh -huh. and ground it to powder, Woo. and strawed it upon the water, and made the children of Israel drink of it. He made them drink 
of that golden calf that they made out of, out of the gold of the earrings. Keep going. And Moses said unto Aaron, mm. What did this people unto thee, mm -hmm. and that thou hast brought so great a sin upon them? Right. And Aaron said, mm. Let not the anger of my Lord wax hot. Thou knowest the people mm. that they are set on mischief. For they say unto, for they say unto me, Make us God, which shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us out of the land of Egypt, right. we know not what has become of him. Mm. And I said unto them, Whatsoever have any, whatsoever have any gold, let them break it off. So they gave it, to, so they gave it me. Then I cast into the fire, and there came out this cat. Very and, interesting, right there, is there? <laughs> that ain't that ain't what happened at all. Mm -hmm. He fashioned it. He, he, he shaped it. He did everything he could to it. Let's go to Matthew. I just wanted to show you that no sons of Moses left. Uh, the people just went and uh, went and um, sinned against the Lord, uh, actually right from the beginning. Right. Uh, let's go skip over down to Matthew. We're gonna go to Matthew chapter twenty-two. I'm gonna bring something else in here, right here. Let's go to Matthew chapter twenty-two, and then we're gonna pick it up at verse thirty-four. Matthew 22 and verse 34. Uh, right here, you know, the, the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees was uh, trying to, you know, have a conversation and, and basically trying to trick Jesus. And so they want to try to bring somebody in that's a lawyer to see if they can kind of, uh, you know, flex them a little bit. So let's pick it up at verse 34 and go ahead and read. But when the Pharisees had heard that he had put the Sadducees to silence, uh -huh. they were gathered together. Mm. Then one of them, mm. which is a lawyer, a lawyer, asked him a question, tempted him and saying, Master, right. which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and uh, with all thy soul mm -hmm. and with all thy mind. Mm -hmm. This is the first and great commandment. Right. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Right. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. That's it. Well, on these two commandments, basically, lay, they do lay all the laws yes, and the prophets. It's just saying you got to love. I, if I love you, if I love my brothers and my sisters, I'm not going to go against your wife or your husband. I'm not going to covet uh, mm -hmm. anything that you want. I'm, thou shalt not kill. I won't steal from you. So on those two mm -hmm. is all the commandments. That's right. We're going to go to John right now, uh, chapter 14. And we're going to pick it up at verse 15, John 14 and 15. When you get there, brother, go ahead and read. If you love me, keep my commandment. Mm. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, read and shall be again in you. If ye love me, keep my commandments. I'm just saying, that's Jesus talking right there. And he's telling you, keep the commandments. Go ahead and read. And I will pray the Father, right. and he shall give you another comfort, uh -huh. that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, Come on. and he sh and, and shall be within you. I, leave, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you, yet a little while, and the world see me no more. Right. But ye see me because I live. Ye shall live also. Go ahead. And at that day, ye shall know that I am that I am in the father, in my father, uh -huh. and ye in me, and I in you. Go ahead. He that have my commandments and keepeth them, it is he that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. That seems to be really self-explanatory right there. Yes, it says sir. he that hath my commandments and keep them. Now he adding caveats to this thing and keep them. It says he is that love me and he that loveth me shall be loved by my father. Yes, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Mm -hmm. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 13. And, and then we're going to pick it up at verse one. Here, what we do here at the house of Jacob, we um, have a Bible lesson. And then we, we do line upon line and precept upon precept. So the title, the title of today's lesson is dealing with the Ten Commandments and other, its importance. And so then what we do is we go find you scriptures that, 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 that indicate exactly what we're saying. So Deuteronomy 13, and we're going to pick it up uh, at verse 1. When you get there, Brother Torek, go ahead and read. If there arise among you a prophet. Or a dream of dreams, uh -huh. and give it thee a sign or a wonder, uh -huh. and the sign or the wonder come pack come to pass. Uh -huh. Whereof he spake unto thee, uh -huh. saying, 
Let us go after other gods, which which ha, which thou has not known, and let us serve them. Okay, hold on real quick. It's verse two. Read verse two again. And the signs or the wonders came to pass. And the signs and the wonders came to pass. You might meet a brother or somebody, or you maybe a sister out there, and they they might call themselves a prophet. They might manifest something that might come true. We can call them dreamers, anything you want. But then if they uh, let, let us go after other gods, go ahead, Torek. Which thou, which mm -hmm. thou has not known, uh -huh. and let us serve them. Go ahead. Thou shalt not hearken unto the words that the, of that prophet. That Exactly. Go ahead. Or that dream of uh, dreams. Uh -huh. For the Lord your God proveth you to know whether ye love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Keep going. Ye shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments. And do what? Keep his commandments. Keep going. And obey his voice. Right. And ye shall serve him and cleave unto him. Mm. And that prophet. Go ahead. Or that dream of dreams shall be put to death. Shall be put to death. Go ahead. Because he, because he has spoken to turn you away from the Lord your God, mm. which brought you out of the land of Egypt mm. and redeemed you out of the house of bondage. Right. To thirst thee out of the way which the Lord thy God commanded thee to walk in. So shall thou put Put the evil away from the midst of thee. So you should put the evil away in the midst of you. Yeah. Anything or anyone that teaches anything that's against these commandments, you they, they're going to be put to death according to the scriptures. That's so that's all I'm doing. I'm just reading the scriptures to you. And I'm just emphasizing what the scriptures are saying. Let's go to 1 Timothy uh, chapter 1. And we're going to read 1 through 11. 1 Timothy uh, chapter 1. And we're going to read 1 through 11. When you get that, Brother Turk, go ahead and read. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, uh -huh. by the command of, our, of, God, of, of God, our Savior, and the Lord Jesus Christ, which is our hope. Okay, uh, hold on. So this is Paul here talking to Timothy, and uh, everyone loves Paul for some reason, and I love him too because mm -hmm. he's in the Bible and he's one of the apostles. But uh, start that over and let's go. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, uh -huh. by the command of God our Savior and the Lord Jesus Christ, which is our hope, unto Timothy, my own son in faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and Jesus Christ our Lord. Uh -huh. As I besought, besought thee to abide still at Ephesus uh -huh. when I went to Macedonia, right. that thou mayest charge some that, te that they teach no other doctrine, neither give heed to fables and endless genealogy, Go ahead. which ministers questions rather than godly edifying, which is in faith, so do. Right. Now the end of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart and of a good conscience of a faith and a friend uh -huh. from which from from which some having served have swerved have turned aside for, unto vain jangle. Right. Designed to be teachers of the law. Teachers of the law. Understanding neither what they say nor what they affirm. Go ahead. But we know that the law is good. But we know that the law is good. Go ahead. If a man use it lawfully. Come on. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man. The law is not made for the righteous man. But for the lawless and disobedient, uh -huh. for the ungodly and for the sinners, uh -huh. for unholy and profane, uh -huh. for murders of fathers and murders of mothers. He's going back to part of the 10, go ahead. For manslayers, uh -huh. for whoremongers, go ahead. For them that defile themselves with mankind, for man stealers, for liars, for purged persons. Or if any, or if there be any other thing that is contrary, contrary to sound doctrine. That's what I'm talking about. Go ahead. According to the glorious gospel of the blessed, of the blessed God, which is, which is committed to my trust. Which is committed to my trust. So it says over here, um, that, uh, read verse nine for me. Knowing this, uh -huh. that the law is not made for a righteous man. So when it comes to the law and, and, and being righteous, and but the law is, is for the lawless, and you know, it's the same thing. Uh, if I'm driving my car and I stop at the red light, I, I, the law tells me to stop. Mm -hmm. And so then that light don't mean anything to me as far as me sinning or if we're going to use it in that term or getting a ticket unless I run it. So if I don't run that light, I'm still staying inside the law. So it ain't made for me. Read, read that ninth verse again for me. Knowing this, uh -huh. that the law is not made for a righteous man, right. but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for the sinners, uh -huh. for the unholy and profane, for murders of fathers and murders of mothers, for manslayers. That's good enough. Let's go to Psalms now. Psalms chapter 19. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. 
Psalms 19 verse 1. We're just trying to help you understand how good these Ten Commandments are and what their importance is. And so we're going to go to Psalms chapter 19 and we're going to pick it up uh, at verse 1. We read 1 through 3 and then we're going to skip down uh, to verse 7. Uh, when you get there, go ahead and read. The heavens declare the glory of God, mm -hmm. and the formation showeth his handiwork. Uh -huh. Day unto the day utter, utter speech, uh -huh. and night unto night showeth knowledge. Uh -huh. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. There is no speech or no language uh, where their voice is not heard. This word of God is going to get out there to everybody. everybody. It's, it's in everybody's language. So we can't say that you ain't hearing it. And if you don't speak English, I got that. But the, it, it's written in Japanese and all the other language, all the languages that you have. Right. The, 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 the deal is, is to read your scriptures. Yeah. And, and, and if you can't uh, understand your scriptures, you can always come out here to the house of Jacob. And we'll uh, sit down with you and open up the book, answer any questions you want to answer. Uh, let's skip down to verse, uh, skip down to verse seven and go ahead and read. The law of the Lord is perfect. The law of the Lord is perfect. Converting the soul. Converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure. The testimony of the Lord is sure. Making wise and simple. Mm -hmm. The statutes of the Lord are right. The statutes of the Lord are right. Rejoice in the heart. Mm -hmm. The command of the Lord is pure. Enlighten the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean. Enduring forever. The judgment of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. Okay. So verse 8 says, The statutes of the Lord are right. Rejoice in the heart. And the commandments of the Lord is pure. Enlightening the eyes. Yes, sir. Let's go to Psalms chapter 78. And we're going to uh, read verses 1 through 7. Psalm 78. Verses 1 through 7. When you get there, Brother Tork, go ahead and read. Give ear, O my people, mm -hmm. to my law. Mm -hmm. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. Right. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old, which you have heard and known, mm. and our fathers have told us. We will not hide them from their children. Showing to the generations to come to the praise of the Lord. Praise of the Lord. And his strength. Right. And his wonderful works that he hath done. For he established a testimony in Jacob and a point of law in Israel. Right. Which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children. Mm. That the true that the generations to come might know them, even the children which should be born. Right. Who would who who should arise and declare them to their children? Okay, that they may that they might set their hope that their hope in God. They might set their hope in God. Go ahead and not forget the works of God, and not forget the works of God, but keep His commandments. But keep His commandments. It's saying it throughout all the scriptures. Yeah. Uh, let's go to uh, Deuteronomy uh, chapter four, and we're going to read verse two. Then we're going to skip Deuteronomy chapter four. And we're going to read verse 2, then we're going to skip down to verse 5. Uh, Deuteronomy 4 and verse 2, go ahead and read. Ye should not add unto the word which I command you. Don't add unto the word which I command you, go ahead. Neither shall ye, ye dismiss aught from it, mm -hmm. that ye may keep the commands of the Lord your God which I command you. He tells you to keep the commands of God which he commanded you. Skip down to verse 5 and go ahead and read. Behold, behold, I have taught you statutes and judgment, statutes and judgment, even as the Lord my God commanded me, mm -hmm. that ye should do so in the land where ye go to possess. It. Right. Keep therefore and do them. Mm. For this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations. This is your wisdom and understanding in the sight of the nations. Go ahead. We shall hear all these statutes and say, Sure, this great nation is a wise and understanding people. Mm -hmm. But what nation is there so great? Who have God is so near, un near unto them as the Lord our God is in all things that we call upon him for. Right. And what nation is there so great that has statutes and judgments so righteous all this law, which I set before you this day. Set before you this day. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 30. And we're going to pick it up at verse 10. Deuteronomy 30. And we're going to pick it up at verse 10. When you get there, Brother Torek, go ahead and read. 
if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Once again, it's telling you to hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God. Go ahead. To keep his commandments to, and his statutes. To keep his commandments and his statutes. Go ahead, Brother Torah. Which are written in this book of the law. Mm. And if thou turn unto the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. For this commandment, which I commanded thee this day. Right. Is not hidden from thee, neither is it far off. Mm. It is not in heaven that thou shouldest say, who shall go up for us to heaven and bring it unto us? that we may hear it and do it. This word is getting out to everybody. You don't have to, you know, petition to God to bring it down to you. He's already brought it down to you. He yes, put it did. in his book. And if, and if it, English ain't your first language, you can't understand English, get in the language that you understand and, and, and have someone show you and walk you through it. Go ahead and read, Brother Tor. Neither is, neither is it beyond the sea. Beyond the sea. That thou shouldest say, mm -hmm. who shall go over the sea for us right. and bring it unto us right. that we may hear it and do it. Go ahead. But the word is very near unto very thee. Very near unto thee. In thy mouth and in thy heart. It says that, also in your heart. Go ahead, Brother Tor. That thou mayest, mayest do it. Mm -hmm. See, I have set before thee this day life and good. Life and good. And death and evil. Come on. And that I commanded thee this day to love the Lord thy God. Go ahead. To walk in his ways. Walk in his ways. And to keep his commandments. Mm -hmm. And his statutes. And his judgment that, that, I, that thou mayest live and multiply. Mm. And the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land where thou goest to possess it. All right. Let's go to Matthew uh, chapter 19. Mm. Let's go to Matthew chapter 19. Just running over some scriptures about the laws and the testimonies that we're supposed to keep um, and showing you the importance of, uh, I mean, I already showed you the importance of it when I just read the Ten Commandments so, to you, so the lesson could be over. So <laughs> let's uh, go to uh, Matthew chapter 19, and then we're going to pick it up uh, at verse 16. We're just walking you through some scriptures here at the house of Jacob. Number will appear on the, and you can always call in. Uh, uh, you can visit, you know, see us on our web. You can go to our website and and look up anything, or you can just call or come by on, on a Sabbath day, of course, mm -hmm. uh, to uh, worship with us. Uh, Matthew chapter 19, and we're going to pick it up at verse 16. Uh, when you get there, Brother Torrent, go ahead and read. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, right? what good things should I do that I may inherit eternal life? So uh, there's a man that's coming to Jesus, and he said, And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master. Well, we know who the good master yes, is. Uh, what good things shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? That's the question. Let's see what Jesus say. Go ahead and read verse 17. And he 17. said unto him, mm -hmm. Why calls thou me good? Mm. There is none good but one, that is God. Come on. But if thou wilt enter into life, Keep the commandments. He said, if you want to enter into life, he said, keep the commandments. Let's go and see what a couple more things he's saying. Go ahead and keep reading verse 18. He said unto him, mm -hmm. which well, go ahead. Jesus said, mm -hmm. thou shall do no murder. Back to the 10. Thou shall not commit adultery. Mm -hmm. Thou shall not steal. Mm -hmm. Thou shall not bear false witness. Mm -hmm. Honor thy father and thy mother. And thou shall love the, the, thy neighbor as thyself. All righty. All right. So right in here, uh, there's a man that wanted eternal life, and he asked Jesus what to do. Basically, Jesus took him back to the tent. He did. That's really all he did, Brother Turk. I don't mm -hmm. know if you, did you see anything different in there? No, sir. I didn't see nothing different either. Okay. We're going to go back to Exodus, and let's just have a little fun in Exodus again. Go back to the uh, Ten Commandments, in case we forget that fast, hmm. like so many people do. Uh, Exodus chapter 20. And I do also. <laughs> Exodus chapter 20. And we're going to pick it up at, uh, we're going to read 8 through uh, 10. Uh, pick it up verse 8. Go ahead and read. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Uh -huh. Six days shall thou labor mm -hmm. and do all thy work. Mm -hmm. But the seventh day is the Sabbath is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. Right. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy man manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor the stranger that is within thy gates. All right, all right, all right. So we just know that what I just want to point out here in this part was just the, the Sabbath day. And then, you know, God also have high Sabbaths also. Mm -hmm. And we're going to go over to Leviticus and, and read one of those in Leviticus so. chapter 23. And then we're going to pick it up at verse 27. Uh, Leviticus 23 and 27 even though this is talking about the day of atonement which is also a great important day yes, but it's also still uh, a sabbath day and let's just see what they did on this day here uh read uh 27 go ahead and pick it up and read go ahead and read also on the 10th day of the seventh month 
there should be a day of atonement. Uh-huh. It should be a holy convocation. Holy convocation. You, and ye shall afflict your souls and offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Right. And ye shall do no work in that same day. For it is a day of atonement. Mm. To make an atonement for you before the Lord your God. Right. For whatsoever soul it be that shall not be afflicted in that same day, uh-huh. he should be cut off from among his people. He said he could be cut off from among his people that don't do this. Go ahead. And whatsoever soul it be that doeth any work in that same day, that same soul will I destroy from among his people. Go ahead. Ye shall do no matter of work. It should be a statue forever throughout your generation and all your dwelling. Uh-huh. It shall be unto you a Sabbath the rest. And ye shall afflict your soul. Uh-huh. In the ninth day of the month of Eden, from even unto even, shall ye celebrate your Sabbath. Come on now, I like that. Let's go to Nehemiah. Let's see what he has to say about this. We can go to Nehemiah chapter 13. Nehemiah uh, chapter 13. I knew I was going to. I knew this was going to happen. Nehemiah. Uh, Nehemiah, oh, right before Job, uh, chapter 13, uh, and then we're going to pick it up uh, at verse uh, 15. Nehemiah 13, and uh, verse 15. Go ahead and read. In those days saw I in Judah some treading wine presses on the Sabbath. Uh-oh, go and, ahead. And bringing in sheaves. And laid and laid in asses, and as also wine, grapes, and figs, and all manner of burden, mm-hmm. which they bought into Jerusalem on the Sabbath day. Right. And I testified against them in the day when they sold victuals. Read that over again for me, Tori. In those days saw I in Judah mm. some treaded wine presses on the Sabbath. Right. And bringing in sheaves, and laid in asses, as also wine, grapes, and figs, and all manner of burdens which they brought into Jerusalem on the Sabbath day. Now, they know they wasn't supposed to do this on the Sabbath day. Mm-hmm. At least at least Israel did. Right. They, they knew what was going on. Nehemiah knew that this wasn't the right thing to do. And so he's going to have something to say about this. But go ahead and read. And I testified against them in the day when they sold victory. I had a conversation with them. Go ahead. There dwelt men of Tyre. Uh-huh. Also therein was brought fish. And all manner of and all manner of wear, right? And sold on the Sabbath unto the children of Judah and in Jerusalem. Then I contended with the nobles of Judah and said unto them, "What evil thing is it that ye do and profane the Sabbath day?" He said, "What evil? Thing? All they're doing is selling stuff. They just you know selling things and selling merchandise. Hmm. They, they, that's that's what they that was they thinking." And then, but, but Nehemiah uh, said, what evil thing is this that ye do that profane the Sabbath day? So you see, it's not about uh, me selling something on any particular day except the Sabbath day. Mm. And so that is how you profane the Sabbath day. Because people might say, well, you know, ain't nothing wrong, man. Me try and make a little extra money, you know, throughout the week. You know, maybe the Sabbath day is when I got to go grocery shopping or, or go sell all my stuff. But you're profaning the Sabbath. Mm-hmm. And, and, that, and that's the key. All right, go, go ahead and read. 18. Mm-hmm. Did not your fathers dust? And did our God, did not our God bring all this evil upon us? Right. And upon this city? Yeah, ye bring more wrath upon Israel by profane the Sabbath. Hold on. It says, did not your fathers before our time thus, mm-hmm. and did not our gods bring all evil upon us? Back in the day, they wasn't supposed to do all these things, and they they, they disobeyed the Sabbath also in those days, and then God brought wrath on them. Bring, read 18 again. Did not our fathers thus, mm-hmm. and did not our God bring all this evil upon us? Right. And upon this city? Right. Yet ye bring more wrath upon Israel by profane the Sabbath. Mm-hmm. And it came to pass that when the gates of Jerusalem began to be began to be dark before the Sabbath. Right. I command that the gates should be shut mm. and charged that they should not be open to after the Sabbath. Keep on going. And some of my servants set I at the gates that there should not no bird to be bought in on the Sabbath day. So the merchants and sellers of all kinds of wear lodged throughout Jerusalem at once, once or twice. Then I testified against them. Then he talked to them again and said unto them, why lies ye about the wall? If you do so again, I will lay hands on you. Uh-huh. From that time forth, 
They came no more on the set. It just seemed that Nehemiah just took a stand. He did. Uh, for what God has already told him. Mm -hmm. And he didn't want to get himself in trouble or his people back in trouble like, like his forefathers did. Let's go to uh, Psalms 105. Let's go to Psalms 105. Just want to let you know how important that Sabbath day was. And uh, Nehemiah was ready to fight for it, it seems like, in, in, that, in that scripture to me. Psalms 105, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Psalms 105, verse 1. When you get there, Brother Turk, go ahead and read. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. Call upon his name. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. Mm -hmm. Sing unto him. Woo. Sing songs unto him. Talk ye of all his wondrous works. All his wonderful works. Go ahead. Glory ye in his holy name. Mm. Let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. Right. Seek the Lord and his strength. Mm. Seek his face evermore. Mm -hmm. Remember his marvelous work that he had done, his wonders, and his judgment of his mouth. O ye seed of Abraham, his servant, ye children of Jacob, his children. Is he the Lord our God? His judge, his judges are in all the earth. Mm -hmm. He has remembered his covenant forever. The word which he commanded uh, commanded to a thousand generations. Hold on here. It says he uh, remembered his covenant forever. Now, this is some of the stuff that we read back there in Galatians um, chapter 3 when it was talking about Abraham and, and the promise. Uh, read 8 again and keep on reading. He had remembered his covenant forever. Uh -huh. The word which he commanded to a thousand generations. Go ahead. Which covenant he made with Abraham. Thank you. And his oath unto Isaac. Uh -huh. And confirmed the same unto Jacob for a law. And to Israel for everlasting covenant. It's everlasting covenant. Go ahead. Saying unto thee, will I give, I will give thee the land of Canaan, a lot of your inheritance. All right. That's good. Let's go to Psalms, uh, 103. And we're going to, uh, pick it up at verse 17. Psalms 103. Uh, we're going to pick it up at verse 17. When you get there, brother Torek, go ahead and read. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. Everlasting, everlasting again. Go ahead. Upon them that fear him and his righteousness to the children and to children's children. Hold on, please. It says, but the, mer the mercy of the Lord is for everlasting to everlasting. It says, though, <laughs> that's a little caveat again there. <laughs> it says, upon them that fear him mm -hmm. and his righteousness unto children's ch children. Go ahead. To such as keep his covenant. And to those that remember his commandments to do them. There it is right there again. So, you know, his, his mercy is definitely for everlasting, everlasting. You definitely want God's mercy. You want his forgiveness. You want his love. He says he's there for you. It says to such as keep his covenant, which is that promise knowing that we're going back to that land. And that land is promised to us whenever it's time to go. Mm -hmm. And to those that remember his Man. commandments to do them. Go ahead. The Lord have prepared his throne in the heavens. Mm. His kingdom ruled over all. Mm -hmm. Bless the Lord. Mm. He, is, uh, he is angels mm -hmm. that excel in strength, mm -hmm. that do his commandments. That do his commandments. Hearken unto the voice of his word. Man. So that, that we're going to go to Psalms chapter 89 right now, and we're going to pick it up at verse 30. But right there again, the, we, we're going to hit a couple of Psalms here, and all of them is telling you that you have to keep the commandments. Psalms 89. Verses 30 through 32. Psalms 89, verses 30 through 32. When you get there, go ahead and read. If his children forsake my law and walk not in my judgments, if they break my statutes and keep not my commandments, mm. then will I visit their transgressions with the rod and their iniquity with stripes. Let's start that over again. <laughs> <laughs> now he's talking about beating you. But <laughs> let's start picking up at verse 30 again. If his children forsake my law. If you forsake his law. And walk not in my judgment. And walk not in his judgment. If they break my statutes. Mm -hmm. And keep not my commandments. And keep not my commandments. Then will I visit their transgressions with the rod. With a rod. And their iniquity with the stripes. And iniquities with the stripes. Well, if you, if you don't know what a rod is and what stripes are, <laughs> well, he'll show you. Uh, <laughs> let's, uh, go to Psalms chapter 78. And we're gonna go, we're gonna read five through seven. Psalm 78, we got five through seven. When you get there, Brother Tork, go ahead and read. For he established a testimony in Jacob. He established a testimony in Jacob. And they pointed a law in Israel. And pointed a law in Israel. Which he commanded our fathers mm -hmm. that they should make them known to their children. Right. That the generations to come might know them, even their children which should be born, 
who should arise and declare them to their children. Right. That they may set their hope in God. Right. And forget not the worst of God, mm -hmm. but keep his commandments. It says that they might set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. Yeah. Um, it's, it's really, you, you can't get it. There's a few things you can't get away from <laughs> when you read the scriptures. Uh, one, you can't get away from his commandments. Uh, you definitely can't uh, get away from Israel. Uh, and you, you definitely can't get away from Jesus because Jesus is from book to book. Jesus went from beginning to the end. So you got Jesus throughout this whole book and everything that you're reading right here is about Jesus. He'll let you know that. But uh, or and uh, just keep the commandments of God. We're going to go to John or first John uh, chapter three. First John chapter three. And then we're going to pick it up at verse one. First John, almost at the end of the book. First John chapter three. And we're going to pick it up at verse one. When you get there, brother Turek, go ahead and read. Behold, behold, what amount of love the father have bestowed upon us. Mm. That we should be called the sons of God. Mm. Therefore, the world knew, knoweth us not. Because it knew him not. Mm. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and doth it yet not appear what we shall be. Uh -huh. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. We shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. And every man that had this hope in him purified himself, even as he is pure. Whosoever committed sin transgresses all through the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. Yeah, so this is very interesting. But we're just going to go right there with, with, with verse number four. But if you if you read through this, when it talk about being purified, and waiting on the Lord's return, and being more like Him, and, and, and it still it breaks back down to the laws again. Mm -hmm. Read verse four again. Whosoever committed sin huh. transgresses also the law. Why? Because what's sin? For sin is the transgression of the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. So you can't. Re keep your to it. And ye know that he is manifested to take away our sins. Mm -hmm. And in him there is no sin. Who, who is manifested to take away our sins? It got to be Jesus. Mm -hmm. He's manifested to take away our sins. Because the blood of uh, bulls and goats couldn't do it back in the day. Mm -hmm. All right, go ahead and read. Whosoever abide in him sinneth not. Uh -huh. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither known him. Right. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. He that committed sin is of the devil. Right. For the devil sinned from the beginning. Right. For this purpose, the son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. That he might destroy the works of the devil. Go ahead. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit a sin. Uh-huh. For his seed remaineth in him. Right. He cannot sin because he is born of God. Mm -hmm. In this, in this, the children of God are manifest and the children of the devil. Whosoever doth not righteousness is not of God. Needed that he needed that he loved not his brother. Go ahead. For this is the message that you heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. There we go. So this is the message that we heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. That's still taking us right back to the 10. Jesus even said that when a man came to him and asked him what to do. So everything is about the 10 regardless. We're going to go to Second John, uh, which just right the next book. There's only one book in Second John. Uh, we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Uh, when you get there, Brother Torque, go ahead and read. The elder unto the elect lady and her children, mm. whom I love in the truth, and not only, but also all they that have known the truth, for the truth's sake which dwelleth in us, and shall be with us forever. Grace be with you, mercy and peace from God the Father, right. and from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, in truth and love. Mm. I rejoice greatly that I found of thy children walking in truth, as we have received a commandment from the Father. And I beseech thee, lady, not as though I wrote a new commandment unto not thee. Not that I wrote a new commandment unto thee. Go ahead. But that which we have from the beginning, that we would love one another. Everything is saying the same thing to me. It says, now, and now I beseech thee, lady, not as though I wrote a new commandment unto thee, but that which I had from the beginning, that we love one another. Go ahead and read. And this is love. And this is love. That we walk after his commandments. That we walk after his commandments. Everything. We're going to read this again now, but everything is continually talking about walking after God's commandments. And so one of the things you have to do 
is maybe come out to the house of Jacob, uh, go over Exodus chapter 20, uh, understand what God's laws are. Start with the basics. Start with 10. Start with the two that, that Jesus talked about. Just start loving one another. And, and then you're going to start uh, fulfilling on the promises which can lead you towards salvation. Uh, pick it up at verse uh, uh, 6 and go ahead and read. And this is love, that we walk after his commandments. This is the commandment that ye have heard from the beginning, ye should walk in it. Mm. For many deceives are entered into the world, right? who confess not that Jesus Christ came in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Mm -hmm. Look to yourself, mm. that we lose not those things which we are wrought, but that we receive a full reward. Go ahead. Whosoever transgresses, and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ. Whoever transgresses and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ. What well, the doctrine of Christ is telling you to keep the commandments. Mm -hmm. There's no question what he keeps telling you. Go ahead. Have not God. Have not God. So you might go, oh, you know, you and God are best friends. Y'all got it going on, but you ain't keeping no commandments. Uh, read verse nine again. Whosoever transgresses and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ, mm -hmm. have not God. All I'm telling you what the scriptures say. The scriptures say if you ain't abiding uh, and doing what Christ is telling you to do, then you have not God. Go ahead. He that abide in the doctrine of Christ, he have both the Father and the Son. It says you got the Father and the Son if you, <laughs> if, if you deal with these commandments. I mean, the only thing I can uh, tell you, ladies and gentlemen, is what the scriptures say. Mm -hmm. I'm not adding nothing to it or taking nothing from the scriptures telling me not to do that. Only thing I'm doing is overemphasizing it. And I'm going to read that one more time. It says, whosoever transgresses and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he has both God, he has both the Father mm -hmm. and the Son. So, I mean, that's kind of self-explanatory in itself also. We're going to uh, go now to Proverbs uh, chapter 6. Proverbs chapter 6. Um, and we're going to pick it up at verse uh, 20. Proverbs uh, 6 and verse 20. Well, when you, when you get there, Brother Torque. Go ahead and read. My son. My son. Keep thy father's commandment. Oh, right. Can you read that again for me, please, sir? My son. Mm -hmm. Keep thy father's commandment. Keep thy father's commandments. Go ahead. And forsake not the law of thy mother. And forsake not the law of thy mother. Go ahead. Bind up continually upon thy heart mm. and tie them about thy neck. Mm. When thou goest, it shall lead thee. When thou sleepest, it shall keep thee. Mm. And when thou wakest, it shall talk with thee. Right. For the commandment is a lamp. And the law and the law is light and reproofs and incorrection and instruction are the way of life to keep thee from the evil woman, from the flattery of the tongue of a strange woman. Let's not after her beauty in thine heart, uh -huh. neither let her take take thee with the, her eyelids. Right. For by means of her whore, of a whorish woman, a man is brought to piece of bread. Woo, what verse you at? Verse 26. Go ahead. And the adulteress will hunt for the precious life. Can a man take fire into the bosom uh -huh. and his clothes be not burned? Uh -huh. Can one go up into hot coals and his feet not be burned? Go ahead. So he that go into his neighbor's wife, whosoever touches her, shall not be innocent. Well, I, I thought uh, the ten said, um, uh, don't covet nobody's wife. Let's go to Revelations chapter 22. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Now, this is basically, this is the last book in the Bible, the last chapter in the Bible. Let's see what they're talking about over here. Uh, Revelations 22, uh, verse 1. When you get there, Brother Turk, go ahead and read. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, mm -hmm. clear as crystal. Go ahead. Proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb, in the midst of the streets of it, and on either side of the river was there the tree of life, which bear 12 miles of fruit uh -huh. and yield her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nation. Right. And there should be no more curse, but the throne of God and the lamb shall be in it and his servants shall serve him. And they shall see his face and the name and, and the name, and his name shall be in their foreheads. And there should be no night there and there no need for candle, neither light of the sun for the Lord God giveth them light. And they shall reign forever and ever. And they're going to reign forever and ever. Go ahead. And he said unto me, these sayings are faithful and true. Uh -huh. And the Lord God and the Lord God of the, of the holy prophet sent his angel to show unto his servants the things which must surely be done. Uh -huh. Behold, I come quickly. 
Blessed is he that keep the sayings of this prophecy of this book. It says, blessed is he that keep the sayings of the prophecies of this book. So once again, uh, this is the last book in the Bible, the last chapter in the Bible. And it's still saying that it wants you to do what this book tells you to do. But it's going, we're going to talk about the commandments in a minute. Keep reading. And I saw, and I, John, saw these things uh -huh. and heard them. And when I heard and seen, I fell down to worse before. Mm. The feet of the angel which showed me these things. Go ahead. Then said he unto me, See thou do it not, for I am thy fellow servant, right. thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren the prophets, and of them that we, that keep the sayings of this book. And once again, and you got to keep the sayings of this book. Go ahead. Worship God. Worship God. And he said unto me, See not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, mm -hmm. for the time is at hand. He that is unjust, let him be unjust. Still. He that is unjust, go ahead. Let him be unjust. Still. Mm -hmm. And with he, and with and with he which is filthy, let him be filthy. Still, go ahead. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous. Still, and he that is holy, let him be holy. Still, right. And behold, I come quickly. And my reward is with me. Now, this is Jesus right here. First, that was John just talking about the visions and everything that he's seen. Now, this is Jesus coming into the scene. And go ahead, read. To give every man according to his work shall be. Read verse 12, start over. I am, and behold, uh -huh. I come quickly, and my reward is with me. To give every man according to his work shall be. Uh -huh. I am Alpha and Omega. Go ahead. The beginning and the end, the first and the last. Right. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. All righty. So right there, almost at the end of the, at the end of the book, Jesus is saying, uh, "Blesses those that uh, keep His commandments." And I'm going to end where I normally end. Let's go to Ecclesiastic chapter 12 and uh, read one verse, verse 13, and then that will be it. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, uh, all you really have to do is uh, come out and uh, let's have a discussion uh, out of the Word of God here at the house of Jacob. Uh, read Ecclesiastic. Uh, chapter 12, uh, verse 13, and let's call it a wrap. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God. Fear God. And keep his commandments. And keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. For this is the whole duty of man. We thank you.